Okay, so I've got my different cloud layers in there, like four to five clouds layered up, some internal compositing going on. What else can I do? I can look at my edges and kind of spot check them a little bit. Know what is what, what layers. I'm using smudge a little, kind of push some of these just slightly hard edges into something that looks more believable, like wind is, is blowing on the edge of the cloud. It's especially good for that Gaussian blur layer if you're using that. So it doesn't look uniformly um, softened. And with clouds especially, it can be really hard to see what layer you're on. So I have to do a lot of, and because we're using a lot of transparency, I have to do a lot of um, kind of clicking on the layers, turning them on and off to see which one I'm affecting. So that's Smudge Tool. Again, you don't want to overuse it. It's good in the low opacity areas. <laughs> Thank you. And just like what we did with our creature composite, we want to look at all the edges. We want to make sure there's any isn't anything just glaring. It looks unfinished. And smudge can help with that. So sometimes you can just pull it in and then pull it out and it will come out much softer. And because you're doing it as a tool, not as an overall filter or an adjustment, it will feel more intentional. But it can get overdone. You see how it starts to look like, like white marks there. I can use Dodge. Help that a little bit. Go back and use Burn. And you can save a lot of time just knowing your usual settings for these things. So you don't have to always reset them. And then when in doubt, you can all, always do a low opacity erase. Kind of take it down to what's underneath. And you're going to do that here with this kind of shadow on the bottom. But then I also have the option of just working with my um, my sky a little bit. Like what if I rotate my sky, flip it vertically, oh, that kind of helps a little bit, right? I can even duplicate the sky and then flip it vertically and then layer it in so it kind of splits the difference between the two. So there's all kinds of ways you can play with the sky we're creating. So that seems like a nice, a nice general sky where I can make some of these decisions. And then let's see, oops, I'm erasing on this guy though. I don't want to do that. Okay, so the last kind of final way to play with this is to clone stamp. And this is exactly how we finished off our, um, our creature. What we want to do is turn off all the background layers, right? Go to the very top, create a new layer. I'm going to mark it red by right clicking around the eye and label it clone stamp. And then we're going to use the clone stamp tool. We're going to set it to sample from all layers with a nice soft edged, large brush. 
with an opacity that's not 100%. So around 50 is fine. And now I can take you know, some cloud like this and paint it in a little bit somewhere else. Or I need a little bit more definition. Some cloud like this, paint it in a little bit somewhere else. Remember, I'm only doing it at 50%. Make a little snout. Oh, this would be a good eye. But if I use the eye there, I can kind of cover it up there. Now I can turn the background back on. And then I can carefully decide, okay, what else do I want clone stamped? Maybe it's a little dark there. That edge is a little hard. Whoops, computer's getting away from me. So you remember you hold down option to target. And then you can paint that in. Now this is easy to overuse, which is why we do it on its own layer. So then we can turn that layer on or off. Right. We can also erase away from it or just blend it down. I'm going to go ahead and use my eraser and just erase away from it gently with that soft eraser, low opacity eraser. Yeah. And that's about it. So it's a nice, poofy, soft cloud. It's got some weirdness to it, and it suggests my creature. <clears throat> I'm going to make my creature just a little bit smaller in the corner. So there's blue sky all around it. And now I'm going to save it as my Photoshop assignment for cloud creature. And then I am going to save it as a JPEG. Onto the desktop, Command D, once you're in the Save As screen, to navigate to the desktop. And instead of as a Photoshop file, as a JPEG file. And then seeing the preview, even at a quality of 12, the maximum quality is still fewer than five megabytes, even though 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That's the power of a JPEG. And then once I see that it's on the desktop, here it is. It's ready to upload. Looks good. If I want to, I can do an extra step. After I've done the clone stamp, I can hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. That puts everything onto one layer. And then I can just do simple adjustments like auto tone and see if I like how it deepens it. I could do adjustments like levels and see if the whole thing kind of holds up, if it's darker, if it's brighter. All right. I can play with the, uh, the color balance. But this is pretty much a way to check that, that everything is of even tone. And I can see that some of my colors are a little bit off, but it actually might make it a little bit more interesting. And sometimes I'll do kind of really big decisions here. Like I'll take the hue and I'll shift it. I'll take the saturation and I'll take it down. So like Instagram filters. I'll do color balance and I'll change the highlights to warmer. This is very common. And then change the shadows to cooler. It's called cross-processing. And then because it's all floating on top, you can see how different that is. And I might like it for my cloud, but I don't really love it for my creature. So then I can just take my creature and move that onto the very top again. And then of course, I can take the, the combined layer and I can blend it into my original. Take my opacity down a little bit. Let's maybe show it at 50%, and then is it better or worse? Yeah, that's pretty nice. I like that. Or I can try like soft light, better or worse. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Pin light. 
Is it better or worse? Doesn't make it any different. So soft light, let's try a higher opacity. Yeah, maybe about 66. Yeah, maybe about 50, <laughs> like I had it. All right, so then I like that. And then I can just save it again. And so you see the differences that happen. You can always make adjustments. And I do like that trick of merging everything and then just doing overall color adjustments <coughs> before you finalize. And then save it again as a JPEG this time, keep the same name, but to the desktop. And it'll ask me if I want to replace it, and I do. And then it's been a while since I've gotten to do this. So let's see, hopefully Photo Bucket will work for me. We go to Photo Bucket. We go to the right folder, which is assignment four for Digital Art One. Navigate it to it through the side panel here. Cloud feature. And I'm going to put it right into my instructor instructional examples. And I'll put these videos up onto our YouTube page. And then the only thing I need to submit for this is my JPEG. No sketch for this. Because you have a little miniature of your creature design in the file, I'll be reminded what your creature design is. And as long as your file is fewer than five megabytes, it should load in pretty quickly and easily. And then you want to label it. There he is. And the importance for titling your, your work is so I know who to give credit to. So our semester code is FA19, and then just your first name. And then you're done. And we can see more colors of blue than any other colors. So you can really have fun with your sky. Play with that background at the end to see what matches best with the clouds that you've done. Sometimes you'll have yellower clouds, sometimes you'll have bluer clouds, sometimes you'll have pinker clouds. So you can really play with that background. Okay.